Hello guys, uh, welcome to me man shed. Uh, this morning I'm just going to show you uh, DCC Concepts end of train lamp. Uh, people have been asking, uh, you know, what's it like? Is it easy to do? Uh, I would say it's fiddly is the answer to that. As you've seen on the tank wagon, she's fitted on the end there. I'll show you the internals in a moment. This is the kit. This is what you get when you get your kit. A hall switch. Now, and uh, I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. A hall switch, and there's three magnets. You get three LED lamps with the kit. Uh, there, so you've got three strong magnets. You only need the one, obviously. And evidently, as that goes past the hall switch, the magnetic field would turn the switch on, which would mean the lamp would come on. When it passes again, it would turn it off. So if you're clever enough to have the magnets located around your layout at certain points, providing this, when attached to the wagon, is uh, near enough to the, to the magnet as it goes over, it would turn the lamp on and off. Uh, that's too much for me. I couldn't, be, I couldn't uh, work that one out. I couldn't do it. Uh, so you can do away with that because I'll show you. So that little that little troop there, the hall switch and its magnets, and that's uh, just some spare wire that in case you need it, that comes in the kit. Um, also in the kit are these spring pickups. Now, if your loco had solid metal wheels, and unfortunately the Hornby one doesn't because they're insulated at each end, you would be able to, if, you, if it was one side was solid, one side was insulated, you would be able to get away with this because you would be able to take the, take one, take the insulated wheel off, slide this over the axle, put it back, mirror it the same side but swap it around so that you've got plus there and, a mi and, and minus on that side so you would have to turn the wheel sets around. You couldn't have it, you couldn't have it insulated, insulated. Uh, that would work. That little point there is where you would uh, solder your thing, you know, your wire to. But again, there was, on this particular thing, it was no good. So DCC Concepts, and I'm not advertising them, but I don't work for them. You can buy these pickups from them as well. Comes with a little screw, little. So you get your, and it comes with the screws as well. And this one worked perfectly for this oil wagon, the Hornby oil wagon. And just before anything else, that's the actual brain, yeah? That's, and that's the wire, the other wire harness that you would need. And that plugs into that, obviously, to complete your circuit. Sorry, I've just moved the camera, I do apologise. Uh, I'll also use their heat shrink. I bought transparent, so you can actually cut it to size and you can actually see where your join is that you're ins you know, insulating, so you're not wasting anything, that's quite good rather than the coloured one. These are, as you can see, the little end of train lamp LEDs and they're brilliant because they don't bleed. This is the very, very thin wire that comes from behind them. And the other thing you've got to make note of is that there is a plus and a minus on these LEDs. And the way you work that out, the longest wire is the plus, the shortest wire is the minus. This long wire is important to determine the plus and minus because you have to solder that to a resistor and excuse me while well, I just find the resistor for you okay back with you again these are the resistors that come all supplied with the kit there's three uh, strengths or sizes a 5k and I don't uh, to be honest guys I don't know what the K stands for uh, but it's a 5k uh, a 1k and I actually used a 10k you can see one is missing so that's the resistor so this very thin wire when you find the plus when you find the positive you would have to attach to the resistor and at the other end is obviously the wire from this harness which I'll just I'll go through in a second with you um, what I think the different values do uh, don't think it affects the speed of the flashing I think it's the brightness of the LED you're resisting, you know, you're reducing the current down. Um, and in my case, I found that the, the one saying 10 
gives it the same sort of uh, power that you get from the locos anyway so it's bright enough for me to, and to be honest i never did try the other two to see what they did because it all means soldering and things like that and i couldn't be bothered here on the end of the little control unit there is a little sliding switch and that determines the flashing rate uh, it doesn't go ballistic but one is just a nice on and off and on and off which is what I'm, I've settled for the other one is a slightly slower on off so that's there so that's the brain that's the wiring harness that obviously plugs into the brain like everything else now lots of wires but the three first three wires, which is a, a, a white, a purple, and I think it's an orange or maybe a red. Yeah, take that off. That is that that would go to the hall switch because they've actually got the same colours. So you can't go wrong with the colour combination. On the end of the three wires there, a yellow, a white and a purple. And you would uh, end up joining them all together if you desire to have the hall switch operation. I didn't. So what do you do? If you want it just to be on permanently like I do. So as soon as the track is powered, the lamp is activated. Snip the white wire back to about there. And join the other two wires together. So when you complete the circuit of that, obviously insulate them. You don't need the hall switch. You've got power going to your LED all the time. So that leaves you with four wires now, just like any other micro um, chip on your train. You've got two wires, and this case is a black and a yellow. They go to the train pickups, you know, your little uh, wipers, yeah? So obviously it doesn't matter which one's what, so long as they're not mixed up. So one is positive, one is negative from your track. That gives the current to the little brain these other two is what you connect the LED to. Uh, I think it's orange is the plus. And I said to you, got to, so that would then be soldered to the end of the uh, resistor. And this one will go straight to the other very thin wire of the LED. That's the actual components. Lots of wiring, isn't there? Lots of bits and pieces to it. Now let me show you the good old tank wagon, what I've done. So LED on the back. Uh, underneath, first of all, these are the pickups. Let me put pick up off the right. So there's the pickups there. There's the pickups in place. One, one side, one side. So from there, I've soldered, because it comes with soldering pads on there, which is great. It's got solder on there, and that's the back side of it, but you solder to there. Well, you can do, but I did. So solder from there to there, because that's that side, that side. Bearing in mind that these wheels are insulated, you know, they're plastic inserts on one side, so they don't transmit electricity. And obviously another wire that's going from there to there. This, this uh, chassis was perfect because he was able to drill a small hole so that you could fit these little wipers in yeah so once you determine so obviously once you when you put it in place it's got to be able to rub against the inside of the sh of the uh back to back i've just lost that on the floor don't worry um and that's it so now and then i made a hole in this in the frame for all the wiring to go through so here you can see there's the two the little led wires coming from the back there going through and then from there and there, two wires and two more wires to take the current through the brain. So let me show you inside now. So it comes apart hopefully quite well. Yeah, there we go. I've done it, done it many times. Little end of it, that's stuck on the, well, not stuck, it's stuck with that card glue, so it's got a little bit of movement. But there you go. Here you can see that I had the magnet because originally I had that hall switch stuck to there so it'll be on all the time but I've not elected to take the magnet out this time so everything trying to keep it all tidy everything's coming through there's the brain and on the brain I've snipped the white wire back and joined the yellow and purple wire together 
and it's been heat shrinked there so that it doesn't short anything out. The other wires, you've got two wires that are the black and the red one in this case are going down through there and picking up from the uh, the, the two points there, one there, one there. That, that wire, believe it or not, I've painted it black, but that's the red wire, that's the black wire. So it's coming through and it becomes a red wire. So that's one that's going to the brain. And the other two wires, and there is the resistor. There she is. In this case, it's a blue one. Yeah. So that's got the, uh, and it's, I've just uh, broken off the, the uh, wire, I'll just solder, solder that one in a minute. So I've got to solder that back onto that wire. You see it's quite, f quite fiddly. That's actually the grey wire there, so that is the minus. Okay, so I revised that, so yeah, I think, I think I said that one. So I've got to solder back onto the grey wire there, and this one's already been soldered on to the resistor. And that's it. Now... And then obviously all that little lot there made a hole in the tank wagon for all that to fit into. And the weight that was on the wagon I've, sold, I've stuck back inside because you want this to be quite heavy. So when it's all complete, because now these wheels aren't spinning freely because they've got wipers against them and they need to be a good enough contact for the current to go through them. So it's not as a free rolling as it used to be, you know. So, easy way around that, make the wagon fairly heavy. And I've done that by, I think I've got two or three of the standard Hornby weights that come with the old uh, tank wagons that are on the inside. As you can see, this frame, as I said, being all plastic as it way it is, made a hole in the middle there for all the wiring to come through. There's the end of the screws that attach the pickups to. So this, this what, um, yeah, careful with that. I'm bending that over. I shouldn't be careful with that because if that breaks, I've had it. Because that's only held in place by the two little wires. So hopefully they're, still, they're all right. So yeah, I made this one, put the coupling on the back to make it a feature rather than have this big ugly coupling on there. But it works very well. So I've not done anything about that one. This one is a rivet job, so it's not easy to replace the decoupling on there. But on the back one, I did drill it out so I could have uh, a proper little hook. Excuse me. Right, hello guys. So uh, back again. Uh, the wife calling me saying dinner. Come and do dinner. So I've had a little dinner break. Uh, I've come back and I've wired uh, the little broken uh, LED wire back onto the tank. So uh, as you can see, she's uh, all back and running again. And that's the way she is. So, so you pick up from that one, pick up from that one because the two, the four wheels, they give good pick up. Uh, the other two trains going around nice and steadily, nice clickety-clack. I've got the sound off, so it's not too noisy. That's the uh, rail, rail freight one. No, what they call network rail wagons is the first wagon I tried it out on, and I will stop it in a second. And obviously these uh, tip hook wagons are the latest ones I've tried them on. Now, you can't... I've not discovered a way of fitting the end of train lamp to every single wagon I've got. I have the uh, freight liner wagons, as you you know, that we a few of us have got. I don't know how to take them apart. Uh, a lot of it seems to be made of metal, so I've no idea. So I'm not going to wreck a not going to wreck a, a, a wagon because it seems to be glued together. So uh, not easy to try and do. So I, I haven't done that one. The uh, the ballast wagons here from uh, Network Rail they was easy to do. But you'll think to yourself, well, wait a minute, you can see all the wiring. But, well, no, of course, because she's got a fake load in it, which is covering all the wiring. So that's why that went. And I'll bring these uh, trains to a halt, and I'll show you the network rail underneath. Which one is so? It's this one, isn't it? Yeah, 67. My very first Hornby train, I think, the uh, Class 67, and she's a fantastic train. She's very, very heavy. But she's never let me down. She's been fantastic. Right, so the last wagon here is the one that's got all the gubbins in. So it's going to horrify you when you see the inside of this. So from the back, it looks very nice. You've got the little end of train lamp, yeah? All right, okay, brilliant. So stopped. I'll bring it back so I can reach it. Now 
do. I'll just take it off the track. Excuse the big hand of God. Now this one is the very first Dapol wagon. And here you can see I've been able to use the springs that came with the kit. So there's a spring there, spring there, spring there, spring there, and then the little wire coming from the end of the spring goes through a hole from both axles and a hole there from both axles into the, the, where all the wiring is. Now I was able to do that on this one because the, the wheels that um, Dapo have used are solid on one side and only insulated on the other side so these, these uh, spring pickups work a treat. That's the other thing guys, you can't use thick wire I mean this, this, this wiring was very good from the spring because obviously it, the, it goes through the hole as near to the centre of centre point as possible so that your um, you know your bogey's got to be able to turn, yeah. Otherwise, if it, the wire's too stiff, you won't get you know you'll be getting derailments. But anyway, so now here's the horrible part. Bear in mind this is the first one I did. Fake ballast wagon, and there's the uh, now there's I've used the hall switch. I haven't bothered to uh, modify this one yet. There's the brain. There's the hall switch underneath a lot of blue tack with the magnet stuck to the end there so it's literally up against the magnet and that means that she's live all the time uh, the rest of the wiring is underneath uh, tape here and everything so that uh, it's all solid and doesn't move and then of course uh, yes yeah, that's where she comes through so she's just coming through there that's the bit of the silver wire these pieces of plastic are just in there just so that when the uh, the, the fake load is in place. I'll get that in there. It's level. Otherwise, uh, come on. There we are. So fake ballast load in the top there. Job done. You don't see it. Yeah. So that's that one. So put her back. So she's picking up on both wagon on both sets of the bogies. And that's back to flashing again, so I can send her off. Oh, get in the right direction, Peter. Oh dear. Amateur. <laughs> Just being sacked as a train driver there. I'm not putting the sand on on these things. It's uh, nice just to hear the clickety-clack anyway, but... Uh... Right, let's bring the other one round. Makes a lovely noise. These wagons are absolutely chuffed to pieces. I think Dapol, I mean, the, most of my uh, rolling stock now, I think is Dapol. And uh, these tip hook wagons have, have run perfectly on my old layout, straight out of the box. I've not had to do a thing to them other than obviously I've modified the very last one to put the end of train lamp. Comes with a load. You can see the uh, coming into play now. It's got the three, well, actually, there's four, uh, you know, would be look alike. Uh, steel rolls and they're good to have because it gives the wagon a little bit more weight as well they're you know being lumps of plastic there's a little bit of weight to them that the wagon alone although it's you know has a bit of weight it benefits from even more weight when you put the load on so uh, it's a good thing to have on there and as you can see you can have it opened or closed or whatever so I've elected for two to be over and obviously the more important one this one which is the end, you know, all that wiring is hide, hidden inside. So, but, I'll, but luckily the bogies led itself to being able to screw those uh, wiper pickups to because these wheel sets are totally different from any other uh, wagon I've got. So let's have a look at that. Right, here we are. So this lovely wagon by Dapol. And what, you know, lots of detail and to be honest, at a reasonable price. I mean, a nice detailed wagon with, which, can, which has got features. Nothing, didn't have to add anything to this. There's nothing that comes in the box to have pipes. Everything is stuck to it, including, I suppose, uh, I think it's a vacuum pipe. Oh, I don't know what it is, a vacuum pipe at the end, I guess. 
I don't know, but all these little pieces are on there. And it's working. So you slide that back. As I said, this is it. You're going to be horrified because this is the workings for the end of train. So same thing again. So and these come. These are these are the uh, would be look alike rolls of uh, steel. And you get one, two, three, four. There's three two sizes or uh, three sizes. There's the large one, slightly smaller, which is stuck to the thing, and another one the same. And then the empty chamber is is empty because. Uh, you can't see in there anyway so that's it but there's all the end of train wire there's the so two wires coming from the pickups the same would be replicated inside there and then the rest of all this is you know what i said before where you have to solder to the to the brain the led the led is going through there and coming through there's the thin wires there underneath there's the wiper screwed on this side lucky enough the uh let's see if we get the light onto it for you lucky enough this this uh the bogey has got enough plastic didn't want to screw it there because um, you've got to have the wires so i've basically turned it back to front so the wire is actually coming through a small hole underneath and coming through this way so the, although the wiper blades are pointing there and there's the wiper blades either side the the wire is going through that hole I think it was already on the in the in the front in the thing because it's like the mimmer of this pickup there. I had to drill a hole here and drill a hole there for the wires to come through. And as I say, use thin wires because this has got to allow to be moved. You can see the wire is restricting it a bit, but there's enough movement there that it doesn't derail it. And this is when I discovered what Sudana discovered that uh, the way Dapo have made these. Uh, pickups there's a screw there that's holding the NEM coupler in place and she had trouble with derailments because this is quite stiff it's not flexible as it is there's a little bit of movement but of course it's when I elected to take this one off because that's the end of the train that when I loosened it I discovered yeah you've got even more movement so you know that's how I discovered that and uh, so, which is great because some of the other wagons, you know, they go round and they, the, the hooks are constantly to one side, aren't they? Where they've been pulled against a little spring, they end up being like that. Whereas this one's going to move with the bogey, matches the uh, the locomotive, and uh, you don't get that horrible dog leg, dog leg shape that you get with two couplings that have been pulled against themselves. Uh, so I quite like that. But as I say, so luckily that, that transpired, that uh, I was able to uh, screw the uh, pickup point to, to, the, to the frame and have the wipers rubbing against the wheel. So again, the wheel's turning. You can just see the wiper at the end there. Now, what I said to the Susanna, because I noticed on a on a uh, video where she'd done this uh, adjustment, back-to-back -back settings on this wagon. Now, I've not seen this before. I don't know if this is a new thing. It, this centre section is a plastic tube. And it's got a little shoulder at that end and a shoulder at that end, which seems to be the back-to-back -back setting because all you have to do is the wheel is on a little shaft that pushes into that tube from both sides excuse me right sorry about that guys back with you again so does the uh, the wheels push into this central tube and there is a shoulder so you can't push it in any further so that's your back-to-back -back setting set straight away now I've got here two gauges. As you know, my humble little uh, layout uses Hornby set track. Uh, I bought a gauge from, guess what? Yeah, good old DC Concepts. And that gauge is the evidently defecto uh, size for uh, OO and HO gauges, which is, according to this, I've got to put my glasses on, 14.5. Uh, and that's for OO and HO gauge. But if you notice, well, I won't go and try too hard. I can't get that in there because the back to back is set to this gauge. And this is 14.4. And that fits lovely. And this is what my Hornby set track loves. If I set these with back to back to this one, and my class 68 Dapol locomotive was set to that one. 
she hit the uh, the frog of the points. Not enough to derail, but you could hear it hitting. And uh, certainly it didn't, you know, we're not talking about a hot knife through butter. There was definitely uh, an issue. Maybe because there's a, you know, a, the Hornby is a lot more tolerance, a lot more play on it because it's not the fine scale, you know, it's, a, it's your mainstream, you know, you can run your mainline wagons on it and also these wagons on it. But I had set everything to that. All these things were set to that and I had nothing, you know, I thought to myself it's not running across the points nicely. It'd be alright in a straight line, but when it had to cross, that's when it really showed up. And certainly if you pushed it, they would derail. Got online, saw this one. This is company is called uh, Golden Valley Hobbies. And this is their checker. Obviously durable uh, plastic, whatever it is, you know. And uh, it is absolutely fantastic. It slots in there slots in there the usual thing got to get get resistance you know feeler gauge but these worked straight away well there's a little bit of a gap but um, that's fine but I think on Susanna I could definitely see a bit of metal showing on one side and I said that her back to back will be slightly out although she wasn't having issues so fair enough just leave alone but uh, if you do back to back and on my little humble Hornby layer going across the points it's like it is like a hot knife through butter they all run lovely and it's all down to that brilliant but i think you know that hole as i say i think this these are what 20 20 25 i think maybe i don't know i've got them from rails of sheffield there's a rake of four a set of four i've obviously bought two sets uh because i tell you what guys i mean the numbering i think if there is the numbers well it is so fine it's there and I've got, to, I've got to have my reading glasses on to be able to read it. So I'm not bothered about the fact that I've doubled up on the numbers. I'm not a rivet counter. So you see my rake, eight, eight of these going around on my third radius track that I use and my second radius track. And uh, the points, the crossover, the standard crossover points is um, a second radius when when one point goes across to the other point if they're not express points uh, the curvature is second radius so these go across that now no problems whatsoever and uh, right just something else to show you right okay guys so as I said before my humble little layout is just all Hornby set track yeah using the second and third radius uh, curves and obviously the standard points, which as I say, the crossover between the points, that equates to a second radius. So none of my stock have any trouble running across that. There's no bus wires. There's only one feed. There's a, there's a power track there. But underneath the layout, I've got it spurred off to go to that track and to that track. So these three tracks are getting power from the uh, Gauge Master power control, yeah? And just, just to show you that the, the points are made live by those metal clips. And now just to find somewhere that's the furthest point away from all the power. Oh, bingo. Full power. Right to the very... This is the furthest away. Because that one's going all the way over there. Getting its power from that track over there. And yet, I don't have any issues with power getting to anywhere. All the healthy... A healthy even up even up on these ones no problems it's all alive that one's not because that's the uh, programming track I just made a feature of it but if I want to take the wagons off I can use that as a programming track now there's a little bit different about the layer I don't know if you can see that here I've put some trunking down it's not stuck because to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not sure if that's the way it should be. But I will, you know, I'm getting uh, to the stage now that maybe I should start detailing the uh, the track now because I'm happy with the way it's all running. What you can see that I've done, different from last time, is we've got a fence now here. And because it goes off to a curve round over here, add a little space here to hide the controller stuck a little building there and there was just enough space put put the uh, the fence with a gate there 
Yeah, that's the one with the gate. So there's enough painted it black. So there's enough there's enough uh, space there to have a little truck. Um, yeah, in front of here, all set. And painted this a black and a skirt to hide all the horrible gubbins that's underneath the layout. So my wife bought me some material and I've now got a skirt so when I come back and look at the layout you're not getting that horrible view of all the gubbins that's underneath you know storage boxes and uh, cables and god knows what else yeah but yeah so I put the fence in along there now this fence is not stuck I diligently drilled a hole measured carefully with the fence and made a small hole in the in the baseboard so that is all plugged in because the way I do my fencing guys none of my stuff is fixed down yet let me just show you the way I do it for instance this one here see there's the little peg so two little pegs yeah so that's uh, what I've done I drilled the fence post with my little drill my little hand drill uh, use paper clips to break off to get the straight pieces and that's what and obviously this is bent a little bit so but that means as you can see put it back I can take this in and out whenever I choose he says trying to put it back in there we are in and in push down push down and there we are. See, nothing's fixed. It's all, you know, it's, it's all can, all can all be moved. So nothing's fixed. Even these, yeah. Look, see, it's not fixed. Again, that's got a little post there. There she is. Push that down, and she just grips. Yeah. And that's the way I do a lot of the stuff. That the, the uh, trunking at the moment is not stuck down because maybe I have to ballast, or when I come to ballast it, I will stick it down. But the way way I'm seeing it is that I've got a switch there so I've got the connector you know the in the in the trunk uh, cabling to come through there I've got a switch there so I've allowed for the cable to come through there and come through the tracks a switch there um, a, a junction there so to go to that switch box there one there to go to this motor and obviously this little lot to feed uh, the motor there in my mind's eye, and I don't know if I'm right, I've not put the motor there because that's for the private sidings and that's got its own little uh, uh, levers there. So I've not put a thing. Could be wrong. Similarly, in here, I've used, um, uh, you know, I'm assuming that this is going to be operating these points, so therefore they don't need to have an electrical switch. Same over there. I've not put one there because this is working that one there. That's it. That's that's in my mind's eye. I could be wrong. Uh, please let me know if I am, because um, I don't know. I'm trying to sort of see on other people's uh, layouts how they do things, and uh, I just don't know. You know, I mean, for instance, should that cable in, uh, should that trunking actually be in the middle there? Should it be running along the fence that side? Because they're normally out of the way, but I've got a fence here as well, because I put one here just so that this little uh, siding would be uh, has a, have its own little fence separated it from the main lines. Might get some clear perspex to screw against this because obviously this I can if I my big stomach if I lean over too much I could damage that. So I was thinking if I get clear perspex that deep, yeah, to screw onto the here, then you know you could still see through it obviously, but it will protect the thing because I often knock this little thing out when I'm. When I'm reaching over to the far side of the, you know, I'm not, I keep keep catching that little hut. Anyway, guys, well, that's it. So, a uh, little tutorial, really, I suppose, today. Just showing you my end of trains. Um, you know, the, how I do the lamps. It's a pretty little thing. But they do look good, I must admit. I haven't got the sound on because uh, I wanted you to hear. I've got the microphone hopefully underneath my throat so it's picking up well.
But I think they look quite good. There's a rate of carriages, you know, there's eight of them. As I say, they're doubled up in their numbers, but you would never know. And I've got four of the other uh, network rail wagons off at the moment. I have to store all my, there are my boxes. They're filled up with uh, the Flying Scotsman and their carriages. And then on top there is the freight, li freight liner wagons. And uh, my favorite wagon of all, that's the cleaning one. The one which has, when you put the cleaning pad underneath, I just stuck a, an, a, an oil tanker on top. But that's the one that does the cleaning of the track. You know, you've got these pads, put a bit of IPA on the pads, let it go round, the weight holds it down onto the track and cleans the top surface. So that's an absolutely brilliant one. This one is back from my days of when I ran an HO layer up in the loft, the Roco Clean, which is the one with the rubber pad. That really does, uh, it works, but it drags. You really need a good wagon on that one because of the, uh, the, the, the drag of, of the track. You need a good engine to pull that. Okay. Well, there she is. Nice clickety clack of the old uh, of those things. As I say, the Class 67 Hornby. She weighs a ton. She really is a heavy lo loco, but she's been really, really good. And there you are. So that's the you know that's what I've been doing because I think every time you see it, there's a little bit different. So put the fencing in all along the front, all along the front there. Painted the layout there of black. The trees are hiding the uh, the control box nicely, so when you see the view from down there, yeah, you've got the back of the hut, and you've got the trees hiding the where the bridge disappears into the background as well, which I, you know, works for me for my space that I've got. But that's it. But that's what I'm working on now. Should I, you know, is, is that wiring correct? For the cabling, well, it doesn't look too bad, but I suppose everybody would turn around and say, "Well, Peter, it's your world; you do what you want." But I would like to be a little bit realistic, so that's what I'll do. Anyway, that's it, guys. I'm going to sign off. Hope uh, you've enjoyed what you've seen, and it makes some sense, or it's put you off from buying one of those kits. It is fiddly, but um, you know, when you, it does give it that little bit of extra. When you see it, you know, when you see the thing flashing away. It does give it that, but I can't do it behind every loco, uh, behind every wagon, because it's, the wagon's got to lend itself to it, either for the hiding the wires or actually being able to pick up the current. And as I say, on those freight liner wagons, I can't work out how to get into them to even begin to try to uh, put the wiring in place. And uh, on my sea cow wagons that I've got, my earlier wagons, um, again, the bogey doesn't lend itself to being able to put pickups on, so that's a pain. Uh, whereas the open wagon like that one in the corner, that would do, that would be all right, because if so long as you have a load in it, this one here, I've got a, a dummy end of train lamp on the end of it at the moment, but because I've got it full of sand, that would cover the wiring. So that would do. So some wagons lend itself to it, others don't. So, so she's working again. I didn't damage it, I'm pleased to say. So she's up and running. So the lamp will be flashing on and off all the time, guys, because it hasn't got a howl um, trigger. Uh, she gets, as soon as you put the current on the track, she'll be blinking. So that one's doing it. And of course, one of the last ones I went and do was the... Uh, the one on the little, hold up, it's just, oh, there you go, <laughs> still working, but that's the another one that's fitted in there, but yeah, so nice little curtain in front, Let's hide all the gubbins there, make it, you know, just like we do at the shows, just so that you don't see all the rubbish that's underneath the, the layout, and uh, the fact that it, uh, it lends itself to photography a bit better, because, uh, you know, this area here is not all full of rubbish. You can just look at the layout. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Uh, yet another subscriber has joined, so thank you very, very much. I uh, hope you like what you see. Um, I'm not as professional as uh, Robert and uh, Alan, but hope you like it anyway. Okay, guys.
Catch you later. All the very best. Bye for now.